Oh, the pawns of Don't Starve Together. Are they optional fluff, best ignored by all, or do they hold a ton of underappreciated and strategic value? Well, how about a bit of both? Yes, let's discuss. And first things first, there's actually three types of these things. Green pawns are by far the most common water sources around, as we'll run into them within grasslands, deciduous forests, actual forests, and even the deep, dark caves here. Just note that the latter isn't always the case, and they're very far and few between. But in a similar vein, however, the pond biome here is also a hit and miss set piece on occasion. But most worlds are going to offer you one, so be sure to take advantage after the today for sure. Moving on though to purple ponds, as they only really have one destination, and it's our swamp. So that's simple enough. But finally, blue ponds are found solely in the caves crammed within the lichen fields of the wilds biome and or around toadstool spawns, which is by far the superior location to take advantage of them at the end of the day. But what exactly should we be taking advantage of and doing with ponds, you ask? That's easy. Fishing. Every type of pond is home to 10 fish, and each fish caught not only responds in just under 3 minutes for very sustainable harvest over time, but also increases the time it takes to snag another as you can see, which is why having a lot of ponds close by is ideal. But there's more to it than just that, especially when two thirds of the ponds in this game present their own dangers. Now the former ponds generate frogs during the day, while these purple guys spit out mosquitoes come dusk, so make notes there and fish accordingly if you choose. Or you know, just screw all of that and mainly focus on blue ponds here as they are threat free by their lonesome and give us the far better eels instead of freshwater fish. That said, green ponds in the caves also stop their spawns too, so choose what is best for you. As I'm just the messenger, a messenger with information on how all of these threats actually spawn, but also how to stop them forever, for you see, Come their respective times of day, both frogs and mosquitoes start to generate over and over three to four times once per minute or so. And killing either, while quite simple actually, if using traps for frogs to counter their horde-like behaviors and or the slow attack speeds of mosquitoes against them, doesn't really matter all that much, as both fully regenerate very quickly. And if all you want to do is fish, this whole shindig could get annoying pretty quickly. So then, let's just zap them both away, yes? Using a telelocator staff, even without the use of a focus on the three frogs of a green pond or the four mosquitoes of a purple one, will permanently stop all of their spawns for said pond, leaving you free to fish whenever you please. But if that's a bit too involved for you, which I imagine it kind of is, there's always now the Clever Disguise, a word exclusive that nowadays neutralizes all frogs for all survivors. So make notes. But hold up, Beard, do we still truly care about a few fish and eels when we have a literal ocean to plunder nowadays? Yes. Yes, we do. At least we should. Fishing in ponds is faster and more efficient even if the former foodies ain't the best out there. Yeah, their stats ain't great, and freshwater fish and morsels only offer us 0.5 fish and meat values while in crockpots, which just isn't enough to make the best foods in the game very effectively. But their best uses overall are still noteworthy, as we can trade them to the King of the Murms for a ton of useful loot per exchange, or we can give them to any works in our games in order for them to make some exclusive crafts like Murm Houses and those very clever disguises we just mentioned. And eels, on the other hand, are one unit of fish and 0.5 meat, meaning we can use less of them for better dishes overall. Not only that though, they do actually offer us more healing, and they also give us an exclusive crockpot dish too, which is just a fun little tidbit. And while they can also be traded to the fish man, as you can see right here, we're still better off giving them to the fat man for five gold apiece. And that's up from one gold if given a freshwater fish. Oh yes, it's eels all the way if you want to make the most out of fishing in this game. Trust me, that's why I made an entire video just on eels for Pete's sake. But I'm getting carried away. This here is a video about ponds, so let us wrap up our day by returning to our regularly scheduled programming. 
All ponds can be used to fill up both types of watering cans instantly for our farming needs, extinguishing fires, and plenty more. So much in fact that I've even debated about making a whole video on these things. But in a similar vein, all mosquito sacks brought to a pond can be filled to create a single water balloon if you don't quite have the ice to do so otherwise. To continue, winter ultimately freezes all ponds on the surface, giving yet another point to eels overall as cave ponds remain open open all the bloody time. And finally, some ponds, said like a solid half of them out there, will have a springtime visitor in the form of moose goose, but only if said ponds also have this, sticks. Moose goose ponds are typically all buried out, which is a way to identify them via the map. However, if you head over and you don't see this there, there is not going to be a potential goose that looks like a moose later down the line. Make notes. And there you have it, everyone. The three ponds of Don't Stop Together and their uniquenesses. And no, we didn't include the Oasis Lake here, as it's its own thing dedicated to the summer season. And no, hot springs don't count either, as we can't even bloody fish in them in the first place. Besides, I've covered both separately and plenty. Nope, I just wanted a rundown on green, purple, and blue ponds because I wanted to highlight just how interesting they can actually be, even if they're all over over the damn place. The game is getting bigger and bigger, while its mechanics multiply, but sometimes you just can't beat the classics. Thanks for watching, folks. Well, wish it to all. Be sure to grab your fishing rods, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.